We begin the hour with a yearbook photo, an offensive racist yearbook photo and new word just moments ago from the politician who's in it. And we should say this is not a photo from the pre-civil rights South, not from high school either. It's a med med medical school yearbook photo from 1984. And one of the men in it, either the Klansman or the guy in blackface, is right now the Democratic governor of Virginia, Ralph Northam. He admits he is one of the two. He oddly did not say which one he is. And the wave of condemnation has been building by the hour. A few minutes ago, Governor Northam posted this video on Twitter. My fellow Virginians, earlier today, I released a statement apologizing for behavior in my past that falls far short of the standard you set for me when you elected me to be your governor. I believe you deserve to hear directly from me. That photo and the racist and offensive attitudes it represents does not reflect that person I am today or the way that I have conducted myself as a soldier, a doctor, and a public servant. I am deeply sorry. I cannot change the decisions I made, nor can I undo the harm my behavior caused then and today. But I accept responsibility for my past actions, and I am ready to do the hard work of regaining your trust. I have spent the past year as your governor fighting for a Virginia that works better for all people. I am committed to continuing that fight through the remainder of my term and living up to the expectations you set for me when you elected me to serve. Thank you. Charles, what do you think about this and should the governor resign? Well, I'm going to leave it to the, to the people of uh, Virginia to decide whether or not he should resign. I will say this, though. Black people, proportionally, are the biggest supporters of the Democratic Party. What does that devotion buy you? If this is what that devotion buys you and you do not call it out, then you will live with that repercussion of that for a very long time. You cannot look at Republicans and say this kind of behavior is aberrant on this side and we will not stand for it and stand for it on the other. Like we, you have to make a choice. If either it's wrong or it's wrong. I believe that it's wrong. There's a lot of different kinds of racism, right? There's, there's, there's kind of virulent, uh, aggressive racism that impacts your life and your livelihood and whether or not you actually continue to live in cases of some shootings or by police. There's another kind of racism that mocks your pain and your suffering, that thinks, it, thinks of it as a triviality, and that does not take your history in this country serious. And that is what blackface always is. It plays on it and pretends that it is a joke rather than, than, than as, a, as an injury. And, I, and, and, and either, and I think just looking at that photo, I think you have to remember this. First of all, I was 14 years old at the time. This, you, you don't have an excuse for that. Uh, he chose to take that picture either with whoever else is. I don't know who he is in the picture, but he chose to take it with the other person chose to submit it to the yearbook. This is a public document. This is not like, oh, we just found out. The people who went to school with him right. had access to that yearbook. If there were any, everybody should have been offended when they saw the photo. Imagine if you're a black person in that medical school and that is part of your yearbook that you keep with you for the rest of your life. I want to know, did the governor ever, prior to being caught now, try to make amends for what he had obviously done right. on purpose in public. And if now you're just saying, I'm going to do the work, well, what happened in the last 30 years when you should have been doing that knew, work? You know, of he, course you gonna, knew it's, it's, in the, it's in the yearbook. Right. You put it in the right. yearbook. D Jen, do you see any reason why Democrats should urge Governor Northam to stay in office? I mean, both U.S. Senators from Virginia, Tim Kaine and Mark Warner, put out statements tonight, you know, criticizing him, stopped short of calling for his resignation. Uh, and to Charles's point, look, if he was a Republican governor, it's pretty clear they would have made a very they would have made a statement saying this guy's got to resign immediately. Uh, yes, that's true. I agree with that. I also agree with the point he made about the fact that Democrats can't sit here and accuse Republicans, including President Trump and others, of being racist while allowing and standing by uh, this kind of behavior. There's no scenario where wearing blackface or wearing a Klan uniform uh, should be acceptable. And he was a 25-year-old adult at the time, so it's hard to digest. Now, on the pure politics of it, 
Uh, I think that if you are a candidate running for president, we've already seen a number of candidates come out and call for him to resign. You don't want to be standing next to him when you're uh, campaigning in a competitive state. Uh, if you are a member of Congress, uh, you don't want to be doing that either. Uh, and I think this is a scenario where uh, Democrats really have to decide who we are uh, as a party, but also as uh, in terms of how we represent the country. And, uh, you know, this is a state where he's already woundedly, uh, uh, fatally potentially, I think, wounded his ability to do his job, given just a year and a half ago, there were white supremacists marching through Charlottesville. So there's also unique history here. I can't see a scenario where Democrats should call for him to stay in office. Um, I also want to bring in former Trump White House lawyer Jim Schultz, who joins us now. Jim, Ken Cuccinelli was saying last hour that it's not an easy process to remove a governor from office in, in Virginia. Do you see it even getting to that point? Do you think the governor will, will heed the calls to resign? Look, this is you're walking into a presidential year, and there's there's a ton of Democrats taking the stage here, and I think uh, you hit it exactly right that they're not going to want to stand with him, they're not going to be supporting him, they're going to continue to call for him to resign, and he's going to have to make a decision whether he resigns or not. If it's that difficult to remove him in Virginia, then it becomes his political jeopardy, and he has to he has to make a decision for himself whether he can govern and lead that state with this in his past with this this issue in his past. And I think it becomes very, very difficult for him to get anything accomplished in Virginia in terms of his agenda and get any political support from anyone in his own party, let alone the other party. So, you know, I, I think it's going to be very hard for him to sustain this, and he probably shouldn't. Kirsten, uh, last hour you took issue with, it, with any comparison being made to the, to the Kavanaugh controversy uh, about looking at, at Kavanaugh's yearbooks. Your point was, uh, well, there was a different reason people were looking at the yearbooks. It was based on how Kavanaugh had portrayed himself at that time. Mm -hmm. um, do you think, I mean, should yearbooks in general be fair game? Yeah, absolutely. I don't think the fact that this was in a yearbook makes it um, not relevant. I think that one of the things is, uh, First of all, I just want to say I'm really ha I've been really happy to hear tonight um, on this air, and I've also noticed in other places a lot of conservatives really very upset about racism, and I'm very happy to see that. And um, I just want to encourage them to not just be upset about racism in a yearbook in 1984, but actually maybe look at the racism that's happening with the president of the United States that they're supporting, so they don't just get to come out and condemn this racism and ignore that racism. And I would say the same thing about hypocrisy. They're very concerned about hypocrisy tonight with Democrats. And so, you know, they might want to look at themselves um, and the hypocrisy, maybe have a conversation with the evangelicals just for starters. So I think that whatever Democrats do, they should do based on the facts in front of them. And I think that, you know, Charles laid it out quite perfectly. And my one question to Charles would be is if, um, let's say that he changed radically since this happened, you know, since this happened a long time ago, and he had a, you know, sort of an, a moment where he became enlightened about race, and he realized that he had done something terrible, and he had done things to show that he was different. Does that make a difference? Well, or is this just something that you just, you just shouldn't be able to recover from? And I, I, to me, that's really a question that I have. But, but here, here, here becomes the, the, the issue, right? I hate when people ask, particularly black people, for absolution without, I mean, no, expect absolution from black people without ever even asking for it. Mm. Without ever right. repenting for the action itself, they say, because it has happened a long time ago, before, because I've lived my life in a different sort of way, you should just grant it, even though I have never fessed up to it before I got caught. Well, so dealt actually, with what, I'm, what I'm saying, right. though, is that let, let's say he did do that. Let's say he repented, he can point to repenting it, that he had actually changed. Does it matter, or, or is this just something that you just say, you know what, this is just, you can't recover from this? No, but the change is not the only thing, is what I'm saying. The change mm -hmm. is one piece of it. There is a thing that was done. Have mm -hmm. you tried to correct that in 30 years? And if right. you have not made any effort to correct that, to, to deal with the other people who received that yearbook along with you, mm -hmm. some of whom may have been black people, but it shouldn't even matter if you're black or not. You, everybody should have been right. offended by that. And if you have never in 30 years dealt with that and tried to say, I'm wrong, I'm sorry, and let me just air this out because I have changed. And mm -hmm. let me show you America, Virginia, my neighborhood, my neighbors, that this is what change looks like. 
I did a horrible thing, but this is these are all the things that I have done since then to deal with the horrible right. thing I did and also to be a better person. That right. is what change looks like. I believe that there should be a path for redemption from racism. Otherwise, we're in a whole heck of a lot of trouble. Mm -hmm. But that path requires action on your part to affirmatively deal with what you have done. And if you right. have never done that, then don't ask me to grant you an absolution. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that's how I feel. And I don't, I don't think that he's done that. I haven't seen it, or if he has, he certainly hasn't talked about it. And, and even if there is a path to yeah, redemption, and if, and if he had, let's I hope think... that's the case. I, I think it's the question as to whether he should be the governor of the state of Virginia. Yes, as a human being, we should welcome compassion. We should welcome his change in view. We should welcome if he is going to try to make amends and, uh, and, and go on that journey. But, but the still question remains, should he be the governor? And I think the answer is no.